Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm pretty excited for this one. I finally got my hands on an ERT. It's not like they're hard to get a hold of, but um, I sold a couple guitars and a little extra money left over from all that and ended up grabbing myself an ERT. E-A-R-T. I am, I am hoping I pronounce it right. I think everybody pronounces it differently. Today we're going to unbox this thing real quick. I'll do a quick unboxing because, of course, the reaction of it. I did open it just to make sure it all arrived okay. Uh, but, of course, you know, because what I think of it and how I immediately think of it is what you're kind of looking for, maybe. Or at least that's what I watch when I watch the unboxing part. I want to see what people think about it. So, hopefully... And this thing is... It is packed well. I do know that. Got all the tape off. All right, let's give a look here. It's very well packaged. I mean, that's nice styrofoam stuff. Looks like I did damage to it just in getting the tape off. No real damage, but really, am I too old for a guitar without a headstock? I mean, am, am I too old for that? I don't know. We'll see. I. I will never forget a buddy of mine told me I was too old for a Floyd. And man, that lives rent-free in my head. So I know that I'm too old for this in his eyes. But I felt like I was just... I've always been just the right age for a Floyd. They came around right at that right time. And one of the fun things about getting import guitars or kind of less expensive guitars is that you don't end up having to spend all the money on like a really nice version of something to decide that maybe you don't like it. This is modeled off of a Strandberg, basically, is what it's kind of after in its own little way. I can't remember the exact one that the Strandberg has that doesn't have a tremolo. But headstock free, compact body. You can see in the light, it's satin and the, the finish really just kind of, it's soft in there. I can feel the wood, you know, you can see the, the protruding, oh, I don't know how to, how to describe the wood grain. Uh, you can see that it's very clear through there, really. This one is different than most of them. The NBK color that I ended up with, it has a different body wood. This wood is ash when, it, when you get the natural black one and the neck is uh, roasted that's paduk i think is how you paduk maybe that's how you pronounce it i believe the ones that have the burled tops the burled poplar they actually have a different body material than this so this ash one this ash body is only available in black and uh, the other ones are roasted patoot. Little card there. And then you get an owner's manual. It's a pretty thick paper. It's a nice little manual, instruction manual. And it gives you the whole breakdown of the wiring when you run through the switches. I guess for all the guitars. Okay, so this covers a number of their guitars. And I would imagine it'll describe how you go through stringing up and tuning all of that. One of the really cool things about a lot of these newer, you know, even less expensive guitars is the, the, the truss rod adjustment is just right there. You don't have to take off any headstock cover. You don't have to take a cover off or anything like that. If you need to add a little relief or remove a little relief, flatten it out a little bit more, you just do that right there. That's really cool. I like that. The knobs are interesting. Um, the throw feels good. Yeah, the knobs don't stick the way that Fesley did. So and you can see the ball ends of the strings go in right there. And then it's going to wrap around down here and they're going to lock in down here and you might think to yourself man that looks like it might be a little bit of a pain to tune but look at that you got this little guy and you pop in am i doing that right oh there you go 
You can do that and then it makes tuning the guitar a little bit easier with this little wrench. That's kind of handy dandy, right? So, and it's magnetically stored in there. You pop it back in there. Ah, I'm doing it backwards. There we go. Okay. Just pops right in there. So that's for, for your tuners here. Small. I mean, man, that thing is small. Like, you can probably hear the strings. Yeah, the action. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna need to add a little relief. Yeah, that is, that actually has just a touch of backbow to it, so. I'm gonna have to add a little relief right there. Nice hidden recessed jack right there. Oh, look at that spider. Um, I'm gonna go let this spider outside. Hold on. As I escorted the spider out the door, he's like, I thought you said we was good spider. And I'm like, why would I say we're good spider? Why would I say you're good spider? Oh, sorry, I have to reference that movie whenever I can. Okay, here's a really cool thing. Like I was saying, that input jack really easily takes Takes a dongle. Takes the dongle really well, huh? What do you think? That's the Phoenix Pro one. And man, it goes anywhere. You put the guitar like here, and look, this thing will spin around and get completely out of your way. I tend to kind of like to sit classical style like this when I'm sitting at the desk a lot of times. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to take a couple minutes and and kind of pause and go uh Go set it up just a little bit and just get a little more familiar with it. But that's the first overall impressions of the Git Fiddle. Three-way switch. Nice and clicky. Solid. Volume control moves nicely. So both pots move nice and smooth. Access cavity in the back. And the wood grain is... That whole pattern, that whole look is all continued on the back there. Here is the neck. I believe it's a five piece. So as I move my hands across here, I can just barely feel that wood line. I imagine with playing, that'll kind of go down. I don't know if that's normal. I don't have a $2,000 Strandberg to check that with. And I generally don't have a lot of five piece necks. Most of my necks are, you know, just neck and, uh, and fretboard. But man, I mean, it's it's a little heavier than I thought, but still very light. So it sits there great. It sits there just fine. It sits here real well. I can kick back and play. Wow, man. I mean, that's, you know, comfortable. I, I'm, I can see why people would... Okay, so that's going to feel weird. Right away, I can already tell, like, I thought that was D, and I bet you I'm going to get real... I'm going to do that all the time thinking it's D. A D chord. Sorry about the tune. I'm sorry. I hate it when people play an out-of-tune guitar. So I'm going to tune this thing up. Adding a little relief. Uh, to add a little relief to this, you put the little tool in the hole in that little flywheel there. And then you're going to move to add to get the strings off of the neck after initial shipment you know that i know it's because the neck move it's been through a couple of humidity changes and da, 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 da. so the neck just pulled back and then the strings were resting against it so loosening the neck has lifted the strings off just a touch and then i'll be able to fine tune the height of each of the strings down here that's what those allen wrenches are for and so i'm just kind of adding just a little bit more touching that up and then uh, the tool that I've already lost. Nope, here it is right here. That's big fear, obviously, is losing that little tool. Um, I do hope they offer that tool in their, in their store. Uh, I dropped a tool. <laughs> I dropped a tool. But you pop it in there. What I have noticed is that I use pretty thick picks. And you can also, if these things are slotted, these little fine tuners, <laughs> these tuners, it's hard for me not to call them fine tuners, but these tuners have these little cross slots and you can put a pick right, right in there and then tune the guitar that way. <laughs>
searched around everywhere for this little tool i would say every time you take it off put it right back exactly where you need it let me see how does this go and look at that it just wants to slide off there um, oh you got to put the handle down okay handle down and it goes in it would have been great if it was the other way okay i'm just going to say that it would have been great if the handle was right there but instead you have to grab it by the part that goes into the tuner and see that's where I'm gonna mess up because now I have to flip it around I dropped the tool so I would love that the other way but it seems like a strong enough magnet that once you get it there it's okay you can kind of look at that getting it back in place is a pain too like that's not gonna be something I guess you really gotta just you gotta tend to your strings I'm a good string stretcher but I'm also the kind of guy that in between every song on a set I'm, I'm hitting my tuners, you know, just to make sure I'm good. So the neck is some of the has some of the coolest features on this guitar. Not only is it does the radius change, not only is it a little more round here and then flattens out up here, I believe nine and a quarter up to fourteen. So fretting roundness up here up to a little bit more of a flat. Seems to kind of flatten out up here in the like the 12th and 15th frets. And then it's a little more shouldered here in the back of the neck. That's what I'm kind of feeling. It's, it's not like square flat, you know, but it's a little more shreddy up here. I can even see more of the center piece of wood here than I can here. So yeah, it's kind of, kind of flattening out. And then as you get up here, the neck itself is rounded more. And the fretboard radius changes too. Those fret ends are rounded, really rounded fret ends. I mean, that's crazy rounding. And that was where Ert really kind of stood out when they first came out, was they were putting out these guitars with these rounded fret ends. And I gotta tell you, I don't feel them at all. There is no sprout. There, like, you just don't even feel the frets. And there's a zero fret right there too. Interesting, it's interesting whole setup on the headstock. It's really wild, really, really cool. I, I, I am probably far too old for this guitar, but I, I don't care. That's This already feels comfortable to hold in any of the positions, even with a dongle, even with my dongle in place, I can hold this thing wherever I need to. And um, it's holding tune really well. Obviously, I'm, the colored ball ends there makes me think Diodario. Um, so I'm thinking these are Diodarios, possibly tens on here. Um, nice and stretchy and snappy. I'm going to play this tonight a whole bunch, and then I'll make another video for another product with this. So you'll probably see this guitar in a video. You're probably seeing this after... Uh, you know what I mean. I'm going to use it in something. And then I'm going to get really my feelings about it. So you're going to see this a little bit after the fact. But cool design. You know, obviously not as pointy and sharp as the Strandberg, which I, I like. I like that it's not got that little skinny horn there. <laughs> that little eye set headphone amp in here and it fits well it's kind of backwards so i have to just kind of hit it know where i'm know what i'm touching but 
that's really cool. I got headphones plugged in. It balances great on, with a strap. I mean, this thing, obviously, <laughs> no neck dive because there's no headstock weight, but it sits wherever you want. And right on the strap, it fits fits fine around my little belly. It's got a nice little belly carve on the back there, so it fits right up in your rib cage. I've walked through some rooms where I normally would have to really grab my guitar and pull it into my body, you know, so I don't bang the doorway, and it, <laughs> I fit right through the door. So look at that. See, I'm an idiot. I dropped my pick already, too. Uh, at least I know where my little tuner thing is. This, I'm impressed. There's no dead spots on this neck at all. I've been sitting here playing it for a little while. I went out to the... Uh, to my deck. It's dark outside and I could get my way around the neck really well. I was really surprised that I wasn't going too far. My hand wasn't going off into oblivion over here. And it's really comfortable to play. I mean, it's just, it's just it's a really comfortable guitar to play. It seems like they spent the money in the right places on these guitars. Everything is smooth, clicky, responsive. Only thing I'm really kind of noticing, especially once I put headphones on and really start listening, the neck is great for lead stuff, but it's a little muddy for rhythm. Just a little. You know, you might be able to dial your amp in a little bit differently, but the bridge pickup kills. I mean, that thing is ripping. And the in-between position is, is a nice thing, too. I, I don't think you'd really need to upgrade these pickups unless you know you really want to get particular or you have a particular sound you're looking for but if this is your like me your first headless guitar and you're really just kind of experimenting seeing what feels good what what is right for you um you probably wouldn't want to put too much into this until you really decide that you like it and obviously pickups are one of the first spots to go since there's no tuners to replace um, it's after messing with it, real easy to get used to. If you use a thick pick, I think a thin pit would thick, eh, a thin pick would probably snap. Um, but I was able to get real quick fine tuning adjustments just by grabbing my pick, turning it, finding the spot, sliding it in, and then adjusting it. And it's it was like nothing. And this is staying in tune really well, even with a lot of bends and stuff. Okay, so I've been playing three days now with this thing and I can find a couple of nitpicky little things I'll go over real quick. But other than those minor cosmetic things that I'll run through, this is a great playing guitar for the price. Uh, it's like $369 plus shipping on Amazon. So an upgrade from your $150 guitar that you got last year for Christmas. Sure, why not, right? Or something that you can just sit around comfortably, walk around from room to room and not feel like you're gonna destroy um, some fragile headstock that somebody's gonna be a snob over anyways if you play it. And ultimately, am I too old for it? I don't know, old guys rule, we rule, right? So we can play anything. I'm an old guy now. Eh, I don't care. <laughs> so that's the fun part of it, um, is if you really like exploring and you don't want to go spending a lot of money on like maybe a Strandberg or something that is, you know, elite in that world, this feels great, plays great. I only had to do a little bit of adjusting to it. Um, if you get one and you, and the strings are down, remember, put this thing in, push it up towards the lower strings, and that'll slowly add some relief to the neck. I only added enough to kind of flatten it back out. There's individual intonation setters and stuff for each string, so you can get it really in tune. But I love the satiny finish and the way that the ash wood comes through on this one. The All the other ones that aren't natural black like this uh, actually have, like I said, a poplar talk, a paduke body, this is stainless steel fret, so incredibly rounded that it's, it's, it's just crazy, you know. I've already kind of shown you what I'm talking about. But here, while I'm on this side, I'll start to go over a little bit of the one or two defects that I found here, and that's going to happen. 
the, you see the shape of the neck right there and you see how it's just a little bit rough it feels like something got missed right through here this is you i feel the pores everywhere else i feel no pores and right through here i can feel those open pores on the neck and as well and you get it in the light right just right there something about the way the wood got cut it's just a little bit of a warp right there as opposed to the other side doesn't doesn't really do that it's nice and straight across the whole side and you can see there's no real strange warping the fretboard is nice and flat against the wood whereas right here you get a dip it's weird weird little spot no biggie really I, i'm totally used to it and my finger oils have already smoothed out the rough spot there the only other thing that i found that was kind of weird that input jack cavity is the paint really didn't get i mean it did not get into that little channel at all right through the, the paint just did not take i can see some wood you know whereas the rest of the body every other spot is really nicely covered but you know again no big deal i could touch that up with a sharpie probably but all in all it's great oh look what we didn't do yet look let's take this off all right and we'll celebrate nice and shiny easy access neck i mean I, I could i could list all of the great features about it over and over because it it just has a lot of really cool features but i'm gonna play one more lick and get out of here so thank you guys for being here i really appreciate you checking out the old guy trying a new guitar so i didn't go over the string change if that is something you are interested in seeing a video on, leave me a comment below. These strings have lasted several days already. I'll probably do it soon. So let me know. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see me string that bridge up because it looks tricky. Ert, good job. Very cool. I've wanted to check out an Ert for a few years now, uh, ever since you guys came around. And I finally decided this was the one and I'm happy with my decision. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it here on Double D Guitar. I'll see you next time. Take care.